Hi everyone, I'm The Ember, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this abstract, minimalistic scene in Blender with no extensions or add-ons. So let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so I've opened up a new Blender scene, and I'm just going to select cube, press X, delete it, and delete the light as well. Now I'm going to press Shift A and add a cylinder. And if we go down to this drop down over here, click that, and I'm going to make the vertices 64. Now if we go into edit mode, and go up to face select, I'm going to select the top face, and hold down shift and select the bottom face. Now I'm going to press X again and delete the faces. Now if I press A, that will select everything, and then we're going to press S and Z to scale it along the Z axis, and something like this looks fine. Now I'm going to press Alt E and extrude faces along normals, extrude that in a bit, something around about like that should be fine, and maybe I'll scale it a bit more down on the Z axis. Now I'm going to go over to modify properties and add a bevel modifier. I'm also going to press Ctrl A and apply the scale, and I'll make the segments like 6, and that should be fine. Now I'm going to right click and shade smooth. You can see we do have a few little problems on the top here, so I'll just decrease the amount of bevel to somewhere around about like this, so we don't have any weird errors. Okay, so now I'm going to move this up, then I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees, then I'm going to go into front view, press Shift D, and then S to scale it, press Shift D again, and S again. And I'll make a few copies like this, four is probably enough. Then with one of them selected, I'll press R twice to do trackball rotation. I'm going to rotate all of these a little bit differently. So something like that should be fine. Now I'm going to select the smallest cylinder and press Shift S and then cursor to selected. Now I'm going to press Shift A, mesh and add a UV sphere. And then right click and shade that smooth. Then I'm going to press S and scale it down to somewhere around about like this so it fits in the middle. And I'm also going to add a subdivision surface modifier on top of that. And we can turn that off in the viewport. Okay, now I'm going to press Shift A again and add a plane. But you can see it adds it up here. I want to add it back at the bottom. So I'm going to delete that. Press Shift S and cursor to world origin. Then shift A again and add the plane in. I'm going to scale this up pretty big, somewhere around about like this. And then with it selected, tab to go into edit mode, and we're going to go to edge select mode. Then I'm going to select this back edge, press E and Z, and extrude it up. Then I'm going to select this intersecting edge here and press Ctrl B to bevel. And now if we scroll the mouse wheel up, you can see that adds more segments. So something like that should be fine. Then I'll tab out of edit mode, right click and shade smooth. Before we add any more objects, I'm going to position the camera. So I'm going to select the camera and press Alt R and Alt G to reset the location and rotation. Then I'm going to press R, X and 90. And then R, Z and 90. Then I'm going to move it up and press this button over here to go into camera view. Then I'll press G, X and move this backwards along the X axis. Now I'm going to change the aspect ratio of the camera to square. So go to output properties and make it 1080 by 1080. That will make the camera resolution a square. Then I'll move it in a bit more, so G, X and maybe down a bit. So something like this looks fine. Then I'll press Shift A and add another cylinder and then S Z to scale that on the Z axis, and then S Shift Z to scale it on every axis except the Z, and move it out somewhere like that. Then I'll move it down a bit, Control A, apply scale, and we'll add a bevel modifier. I'll make the segments like six, and right click shade smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to press Shift D and S to scale that down, and then I'll move it up a bit more. Something like that should be fine, and then I'll select the smaller one, and Shift D, Z, move it up, and scale it down. Something like that should be fine. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the shading tab and I'm going to go over to render properties and change the render engine from EV to cycles and change this from CPU to GPU compute. I'm also going to make the max samples 320. Down in color management, I'm going to make the look high contrast and the view transform filmic. Now I'm going to go over to rendered view and down here in the shader editor, I'm going to change this from object to world. Okay, I'm going to add a color ramp, put that here, and a gradient texture. And plug the color from the gradient texture into the color ramp. Then plug the color ramp's color into the background. Then I'm going to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate. Plug the generated of the texture coordinate into the mapping node and the mapping node into the gradient texture. I'm going to make the gradient texture diagonal instead of linear. And then I'll click this plus icon to add another node to the color ramp. And I'm going to make it a red color, something like this. I'm also going to make the strength of the background color 3. Then I'll move this up to round about 0.215. And then I'm going to click the plus icon again to add another node. And I'm going to make this one a light pink color. I might make the red a little bit less saturated, something like this, and the pink a bit more saturated. Now I'm going to add a hue saturation node, and I'm just going to turn this so it makes it a blue color, or a purplish color. And then we can maybe turn the saturation down a little bit to like 0.8, maybe that's a bit too much, 0.9, that should be good. Okay, now I'm going to change this back to object, and select one of the rings. I'm going to click new and call this ring. Then I'll add a color ramp and a layer weight node. I'm going to plug the facing of the layer weight into the color ramp and open this emission drop down and plug the color ramp into the strength of the emission. And I'll bring this black node up a bit more. Somewhere around about that should be fine. Now I'll open the transmission drop down and turn the weight all the way up. And I'll make the roughness something like 0.15. I'll also make the color of the emission a purplish color. Something like that should look fine. Now I'm going to select the rest of the other rings by holding down shift and select the last ring. And then press Control L and link materials. Okay, now I'm going to select the ball and I'll call this ball main. Again, I'll add a color ramp and a layer weight, plug the Fresnel into the color ramp, and I'll make the blend option on the layer weight something like 0.210. I'll drag this node out a bit, a tiny bit, and then I'll drag this one in a lot. And I'm also going to make this one a pink color. Something like that should look fine. Now I'll open the emission drop down again and plug this into the color. And then I'll make the strength something like 5. Again, I'll turn the roughness down to 0.2 and open the transmission and turn that all the way up. I'm going to now select the background, add a new material and call this BG. And then I'll make the base color nice dark color. And we can leave the rest of the settings as default. Then I'll select one of these bottom cylinders, click new and just name this bottom cylinder. We can leave everything as default, but I'll turn the metallic up, and then we can leave everything else the same. I'll select the other two cylinders, then select the one of the material last, and press Ctrl L and link materials. Now they all have the same material. Okay, now I want to add some floating orbs. So I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, add a UV sphere, right click, and shade smooth. I'm going to make this one pretty close to the camera, which is over here. So I'll press G to move. Go back to camera view, move it up, and scale it way down. I'll put it somewhere over here. Now I'm going to add a new material and call this orb. Now I'm going to press shift A, and again add a color ramp and a layer weight. I'm going to again plug the Fresnel into the color ramp, open the emission drop down, and plug the color ramp into the color of the emission. I'm also going to open the transmission and turn the weight all the way up. So now you can see it's a bit see-through. Now I'll just adjust this color ramp black node up a bit. 
something like that, and bring this white one in a lot. Something like that should be fine. Now, again, I'm going to make the white color a pink sort of color, something like that, and I'll turn the emission strength up to 2. And then lastly, I'll turn the blend of the layer weight to 0.210 again. Now this selected, I'm just going to duplicate it around a few times. And I'm going to go back to object view to do that. So I'll put one over here. Scale it up a bit. Duplicate another one. Scale it down a bit. Then maybe put one over here. Scale it up. Put one back over here. Move it up. Go into camera view. Have a look at it. It's not looking too bad. Put a few around. Maybe put one behind the middle orb. Maybe something like that. And I'll also add one more close up. Okay, something like this should be fine. Maybe I'll put one more little one down in the corner. Move it back a bit. Okay, this is looking good. Now, let's go back to rendered view and have a look. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. Now, I'm just going to select all the orbs by holding down shift. And I'm going to press M, new collection, and call this orbs. Now, if we go to the outline over here, you'll see we have a new collection called orbs. And one more thing I'm going to do before we render is go up to compositing and click use nodes. Now, I'm going to press shift A and add a glare node. I'm going to turn streaks to hog low, and that should be it. Now let's go back to shading, and then I'm going to click this drop down over here, and turn compositor to always. Now you can see all these have a bit of flow. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this side panel over a bit, and turn this to the compositor. Now I can adjust the glare over here. I'm going to adjust the threshold a bit, and make it a bit brighter. One more thing I'm going to do before we render this, is I'm going to add some depth of field. So I'm going to select the camera, now let's make this a bit bigger, go down to camera settings and enable depth of field. Then I'm going to click this eyedropper on the focus object and select our middle sphere. And then I'm going to make the f-stop something like 0.5 should be fine. Let's move this orb over a bit more to even things out. And maybe even zoom the camera in a bit more. Then I'll just adjust these orbs again. And something like this should be fine. Now all I'm going to do is go up to render and render image. Now once this is finished rendering, you're going to have a really cool image that you can use for a wallpaper or your portfolio. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.